Okay, there you go. We're going to have more on that story. What are you laughing at? You know, they gave you the world, they gave the world the Walkman. Now, 30 years later, they're planning, yep, they're planning the smart wig. Go figure, the Japanese electronics firm Sony. It's filed for a patent for a wearable computing device on your noggin. Now, according to the filing itself, the thing could be made from horse hair, human hair, wool feathers, yak hair, buffalo hair. I don't know what this is. I think this is synthetic. You can also have synthetic material. But whatever it's made of, the market potential for a wearable technology apparently is huge. Research firms reckon the global market for wearable technology could be worth around $6 billion by 2018. Let's go straight over to Sam Compton, who is head of user research for Seymour Power. That's a design and innovation agency. Uh, Sam, great to have you with us. I, th I think there's a few chuckles in the studio. I'm wearing, but it's not a smart wig, but this is possibly what I'm wearing could eventually be a smart wig one day. But seriously, what is this thing supposed to, what's, what's it going to do for us? Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, Aaron, first of all, it looks, looks absolutely fantastic. So let, let, let's not forget that. But um, I think it's, we're in an interesting area at the moment where companies are trying to take ownership over areas of your body. And I guess I'd question whether, uh, what is the real purpose behind that? You know, we see a lot of wearable technology being released at the moment, which is taking ownership of the wrist, or as Google Glass, as we know, is going to take ownership over this perspective. Uh, and a wig on top of your head, uh, I'm unsure exactly um, uh, what functionality or what benefit it's really going to enable us. I think, uh, you know, having read some information about it, I think it's interesting that they're trying to position it towards um, the elderly, trying to say that they obviously have got uh, less dexterity and less um, in natural interaction with the technology. But my question or my thought really is that um, the old people that we talk about now are actually the people my age or your age who uh, are well aware of all technology and intuitive mm. technology themselves. So within 10, 20 years time, we're not really going to want to put a wig on ourselves. Uh, no, or wear especially, old person's especially if it's as hot as this one. I'm roasting at the moment. But yeah. you mentioned these other items, the Google glasses, there's the smart watches, wristbands, all smart things. Um, how successful have they proven so far? I think they're, they're, to varying degrees, I think they're, they're, there's various different elements uh, uh, that are being successful. So the idea of um, data monitoring and health. Uh, and well-being, I think that's a very successful area. Obviously, we saw with the launch of the Nike Fuel Band and Misfit wearables, and they are something which are providing a genuine benefit because they're obviously closer to the proximity of your body. Um, something like Google Glass, I think is, we're kind of waiting to see how that's really going to hit because um, I think it's a real social barrier with technology as it is already at the moment. You know, it kind of, you know, uh, Google, for example, have designed it in this kind of sci-fi dystopian. Uh, um, uh, uh, ultra realistic kind of world and I don't know whether that's really going to help us get over the innate social barriers we have to wearable technology that we might have got from the Star Trek era uh, uh, and various things but I think we're in a bit of a uh, 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 we're looking for a paradigm shift where people are going to actually really start thinking about the look uh, and the feel of the wearable technology rather than probably trying to stake their brand or their manufacturer mm. into the ground. So it, it, it's almost like we've got to have an emotional connection which I don't with this thing at the moment. Um, but uh, how far can this sort of stuff go? I mean, what kind of things do you guys work on? Well, we do, we're doing a lot of work within the wearable technology arena at the moment, and I think one of our kind of um, uh, uh, ideas or philosophy is thinking about with wearable technology whether we can make something either gorgeous uh, or invisible. You know, can we make wearable technology something that you really want to wear, like jewellery? Um, or can we make something actually where you don't want to wear it at all, so it's invisible and it just works innately with your ecosystem of other technology devices that we, uh, that we have all around us. And I think, you know, trying to just push a brand and trying to take ownership over a body part is perhaps a little bit naive in, in this world, um, uh, you know, as you can see by yourself wearing the wig now. Yeah, and feeling like a right idiot. Good on you, Sam. We appreciate your time. Thank you very Thanks much. Sam, Sam Crompton there from Seymour Powell. Interesting stuff, isn't it? If you've got anything you want to talk to me about, you can follow me on Twitter. Tweet me and I'll tweet you back. Be kind about this. You can find me no, at no. BBC Aaron. And I will just tell you, before we go into a two-shot, I tried to convince my colleague, George, to put one on. I had an extra one.